Hello, uh, I'm Tanul, a film critic at The Wire, and today we have with us Manish Mundra, the founder of Drishyam Films, which has produced such acclaimed indies as Anko Dekhi, Masan, and Newton, among others. He's turned director with a film based on the 2017 Unnao rape case called Sia. Starring Vineet Singh, it releases on the 16th of September. Manish, uh, I'll, I'll start with a very basic and obvious question. Uh, You've produced more than a dozen films over the last eight years. What made you want to direct a film? Tanul, uh, first of all, thank you very much to The Wire for, for this interview. And I'm really thankful for giving me this opportunity to talk about the film. Uh, first thing first, um, uh, I, I would like to correct that it is actually not based on now rape case per se. But uh, during those times, I was affected very much with a couple of incidences what happened across the country. And then I went through some three, four cases and found a lot of similarities of uh, having, you know, this Bahubali's nexus with judiciary, medical and things. And then the system and justice was not delivered properly and timely and resulted in a lot of uh, issues with respect to the victim and, uh, and even their fight for justice was hampered. So that affected me too much and that's where I said, okay, let's, it's time for us to tell the story from the point of view of victims and victims, victims' problems and victims' issues and victims' family. And that's how Sia was born. Uh, it, it actually takes essence of a lot of, at least three to four such incidences happened during that point of time, 2017 to 2018. Um, and, and it all culminated to the point when the accident happened, the car accident in the truck, if you remember. And that's where we all, all came to to learn about this and then we went deeper into it and that's how the whole idea of film or this film came. Uh, why me? Because I I felt that it would be difficult for normal Hindi filmmakers to make a film like this. One, because such films don't, you don't ex expect them to be blockbusters. So financially, uh, they are very edgy. They It's a risky proportion and that's where people won't produce it. And it needs a lot of conviction and courage to present the facts as you see it. And uh, that's where I felt that uh, if I have to start directing and that was always my dream, then this should be my subject to start with because it's, if I could tell the story as I, I, I thought I can, uh, it would be a victory for me uh, in terms of conveying to the audience what I wanted to convey and telling the audience a story and taking this tough challenge to start with. As you said, uh, this film came as a, as a culmination of three to four really horrific uh, real life incidents. Uh, as we know, I mean, India is not a, a, a stranger to, I mean, real life horrific incidents. So was it, what was it about these three, four real life incidents that moved you so much that you were compelled to sort of capture it on, on cinema? That, the, as I said earlier, the biggest similarity or commonality between these incidences were that how the culprits were able to manage and create a situation by which it becomes difficult for the victim or victim's family to even start thinking about justice. You know, so this, whether we accept it or not, there is a nexus when you attain power. Uh, in, in small towns and even in big cities, we may call it, when you attain power, you develop a nexus between whether it is judiciary, whether it is medical, whether it is police, and that's where power comes in. In fact, you can add on press also because then you control what goes in the print or whatever. So that's the definition of being powerful uh, in today's time. And if you are powerful per se, Bahubali or whatever you may call it, then you can, you can uh, create or frustrate anyone you want to at any aspect at any at, at any point and that's the biggest challenge we have to break this nexus and and i the commonality between all the incidences were that there were powerful people behind it who would do whatever they would like to to ensure that the, the road to justice is is very difficult and it frustrates not only the victim but also creates love problem for the family who are ready to support the victim you know, you, you all know that the uh, majority of the cases are not even reported uh, because of these reasons, because 
there are family issues and people feel that it won't be good if things go out in the public domain. But whoever takes this courage of frust I is frustrated even to go to the police station to register an FIR and do things, they are then you know frustrated by these powerful uh, hands of people. And that's where I found was the reason to bring this out subtly while we remain emotionally with the victim and the victim's family and tell the audience a story that they would feel that how difficult it is. It's very easy to talk about justice or fight for justice, but it's very difficult to walk on that path. Right. You know, India uh, and especially Uttar Pradesh has seen uh, many crimes that sit at an uncomfortable intersection of misuse of power and, and the miscarriage of justice. Many films too have been made on such subjects, which sometimes uh, are compelled to follow a fixed template. Uh, we, we see a horrific crime, we see powerful perpetrators, we see negligent cops. Were you at some point worried that real life itself would make Sia predictable? No, uh, again, uh, uh, sorry, but I'll have to have an objection in the question. I don't want to fix this thing on Uttar Pradesh. I, Fair uh, enough. Sorry, That's fine. Because you see the latest NCRB data, Rajasthan, in terms of crime against women, especially rape against women, Rajasthan topped the list around 6,400 something. And Uttar Pradesh is number four. So issue is not about Uttar Pradesh. Issue is about India. Fair enough. Okay. In India, the situation is is grim when it comes to one crime against women, two rapes, and third reportage of rape, and then the fourth justice for those been reported. So that, that this this is the hierarchical problem across India. You take this story and plant it in Madhya Pradesh. Take this story, plant it in Rajasthan. Take this story, plant it in Tamil Nadu. Everything would be same. You know, the language would change, the number plates would change, but things would be same. So, so of course, when we talk crime against women, it is about India. And and I certainly feel, though the storyline would be predictable, there is always an art of telling a story, which 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 takes the audience through that whole arc and through that process. But. But crime is a crime and it's always predictable. What is unpredictable is the journey what the victim, the victim's family takes or, or want to take with respect to getting justice. And that's what we have focused on. And it's, it's a very treacherous or what we can say, it's, it's a painful journey rather, what Sia and Sia and her family takes through. And 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 everything is unexpected as they as they walk through this, this timeline. First of all, to gather the courage, muster the courage to fight and once they decide to fight and take a legal fight, it becomes very difficult to even survive. So that's that's the point I want to tell and that's where it's very predictable across India what we see but but then it's also uh, I would like to say most neglected part, we as people, we as citizens uh, who call ourselves educated and, and, and somebody who is very liberated in terms of mindful thinking and all. We sometimes ignore such signals and we don't come forward to, to help it. And in fact, we forget those stories and chains. Uh, what Like today, even if we take the case of now, we don't know where the girl is and what is she doing and whether she got justice in totality or not. Uh, and, and I'm sure the case would be running in high court or Supreme Court somewhere to get the final justice uh, delivered. So, so, so we lose tracks because we get busy into some other stories. Uh, and, and that's where I wanted the audience to stick around with one person, one family and stay and see how it feels like to be in their shoes. And you know, in these kinds of films, there's often a thin line between uh, a considered exploration and an empty shock. Uh, but in Sia, the cinematography isn't sensational. Ditto the editing. So how did you and your team decide on the film's visual language? My my basic uh, intrinsic core value is is actually I'm a painter and a writer. So when when I decide to come into uh, making films and, uh, and 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 especially directing the film, I was more concerned about my frames, my clarity of thoughts. Where from the point that that one I won't use any cuss words to 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 actually take forward my story. I won't use depiction of uh, whether it is. Um, alcohol or cigarettes or creating all those which has been 
you know, for now, take it for granted that if you're talking about showing such films, it could be there. So, but I would show the cleaner part of India, even if it is village or, or being being poor doesn't mean being, being dirty. Third, that there is growth and prospects and that Indian villages are now very much up to the mark in terms of internet, in terms of connectivity, in terms of being uh, in parallel to what is happening across the world. So all these factors were there. And, and then we framed the camera frames in such a way that the story becomes more vis the film becomes more visual than being a dialogue heavy. So if you if you if you see the film is more a visual story and and and, and we try to show more than being telling more or or, or or on the other side. So that way the camera work were all designed in consideration with our uh, cinematographer and director photography that we should we should not only just go straight onto the face but also across what is happening as a stage across the across the character and, and you will see each frame speaks its own language whenever we have delivered that that's on the camera work and of course on editing uh, two two big philosophies were with us one was that it's a hard hitting film and i don't want it to stretch more than 2 hours you know uh, because it becomes very heavy for the audience to to actually get through those those 2 hours so we wanted the film somewhere at 100 105 minutes and 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 so we were very we got a lot of chance to edit and make it very crisp and clear that was that was one objective and second of course when i wrote the screenplay i was i was very sure of not getting into the legalities of it the crime and police uh, part of it and other things uh, at the background of the story of the of the people who committed the crime i didn't want to go through those processes i just wanted to stick with the arc of the girl and her decision to fight against just against the injustice what has happened and the reaction of the family and what happens to the family so the, the 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 idea of the screenplay and the story was very concise and very fixed and that's why we could do it in a very crisp way so that both that these aspects reflect in, in cinematography and the frames of the film and also in the edit and you know research plays a huge role in films uh, inspired by real life events what was the research process like and how did it end up shaping the final film? I mean, if you go for research, it's very easy. I mean, Google about rapes and uh, incidences in India, you'll get hundreds of stories. Uh, and if you, if you, and we were following three, four stories. So, so we, what we did was, um, we got a team to get all the newspaper clippings respected, respectively for each stories got it and we studied including the pictures and the circumstances and the ideas and and the and the stories behind it and tried to create that if you see and of course i would not forget to tell uh, the name of mr vinod kapri who actually sent me a lot of research he's also a filmmaker uh, and he's a good friend of mine and 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 he sent me a lot of information also to start with uh, we would have gone through thousands of pages and in fact i met at least three victims, survivors, uh, and met them, talked to them, and, and and went through their personal experiences. Even my lead actors also were were uh, got a chance to talk to and interact with them. That helped us to create the story and create the the, the vision what we have created. So research was done very well. It was easy to get the documents, uh, and then the toughest part was what which fa which aspect to take from which story. To create a unified story, so that you take the story of Sia and you you hold it and put it in Rajasthan or put it in Tamil Nadu or put it in Karnataka, you'll find tens of such incidences which have one or two or three similarities about how things are. Yeah. And uh, how did you decide to tackle uh, the cast issue in Sia? Because of the large part, it's implied rather than sort of you know directed uh, stated directly. It's only towards the end that it appears quite prominently yeah so, so one of course uh, i was very clear that i will not make a film which which has a set agenda to start with uh, uh, but i'll go with the flow and what my heart says and and that's why if you see our lead actor is is mala is, is lower caste uh, while the victim is upper caste the culprits are upper caste so, so I, whenever I thought of this story, I always felt that 
uh, it was not that we have to present it in that way. I always thought that uh, let Jatayu be Jatayu for Sita, you know, let Jatayu be Jatayu for Sita in the history. And I always felt that uh, Mahendra, our lead, uh, that's played by Vineet, would be somebody who will come from that background least expected uh, and 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 still educated and ready to fight. So, so that's the new India what we have where we felt that though we get opportunities, uh, whether it is irrespective of the past system, we get opportunities in terms of studies, in terms of jobs, in terms of, but the valor, the, the whole idea of standing behind somebody actually doesn't mean it comes from upper caste or lower caste. It's, it's, it, it can come from somebody who who who's, who's Zamir is in the who who was who really wants to stand for it. So that was the whole idea. But then subtly it has come out, and if you go through the film deeply, you'll understand the nuances. What I have tried to put in and say the reality, what it is, and in spite of those realities, message I wanted to deliver was whether it's lower caste or upper caste. In spite of those realities, if you determine, if you want to achieve. You can achieve. Uh, that's our India. That you can. Achieve. There would be difficulties, but ignore those difficulties and work hard. Probably you'll get success. And moving on, I'll I'll like to cap it off by asking two sort of broad questions. One is about the uh, the industry itself, and and obviously what's been happening over the last six to eight months. Uh, we all know that theatrical releases have been bombing left, right, and center, while uh, a few OTT films and web series have been praised. We are also seeing, perhaps for the first time, the possible death of the star system. What do you make of all these changes, and and where do you see Bollywood headed in future? Uh, see, uh, it, it it didn't happen in last five six months. What we are seeing was was being sown for last fifteen twenty years. Yes, of course. I mean, I'm saying that like I mean, oh. just the evidences of films yeah. bombing in in such quick succession. Of course, it's been a long so, time. We see that we in last 15-20 years, uh, Hindi film industry started drifting from the real content and went into that larger than life uh, uh, actors and stardoms and creating creating those things which 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 would actually not stay back. I felt that the biggest um, biggest loss, what as a Hindi film industry, uh, some of the some of the some of the so-called established filmmakers was that they never paid attention to real content. They never paid attention to stories which had originality. They never paid con uh, attention to the to the writers or to the to the screenplay uh, writers and the genuine writers. They paid attention to the star value. You know, and and that is what has is now come out as a result. That if you don't, and we end up making films, most of the films, the majority of the films, uh, which are zero in content, and are just created for the sake of uh, exploiting the star value of a star, and 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 trying to create a business out of art without focusing on the art itself. So so art is something which I feel. Cinema, uh, or which is a part of art, is something where you focus on the story, what you want to tell, the content. What you content is the real hero, and then you move towards towards exploitation or towards the business aspect. The first part is the art itself, uh, and and if the art is not clear, the the story is not good enough. The stars can't take it forward. It may happen once, it may happen twice, it may even happen thrice, but then. There is a time when people feel that star doesn't impact them more. They want stories, and this, along with the corona aspect, what we went through two years, um, people got exposed to a lot of international content, which they were hitherto not exposed to. And when they saw international content in terms of series or cinemas or whatever, they realized they're being cheated in terms of content, in terms of quality. Uh, what Hindi film had to offer to them, and then the Corona itself impacted them, and they they felt that this entitlement, and I'm talking from the point of view of audience, that this entitlement has to stop. You do good films, you'll be appreciated, but just because you are a star, you're charging fifty or hundred crores for a film, uh, won't make us come to cinema, and that 
biggest uh, that i think is the biggest loss of uh, hindi film and actually as they say that uh, reaching to the rock bottom also helps you to realize where you stand for and then that's where you start again basically i feel this is the churning time for hindi film industry and they should they will learn from the mistakes what they've created and create some good cinema what they were known for in 80s 90s whether you talk about mandi ard satya mirch masala tamas you know damul you can talk of tens of such films um, those were wonderful films and and we're going to international cinema even till salam bombay and all those things you know really. but if you see last 20 years you don't have single set cinema which you would be proud of from hindi so it's it's what the industry has shown industry has grown and industry has pushed industry and pushing and ignoring is what we see now as a culmination or as the result and it's 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 very dreadful but it also is is i i personally see it as a, as a hope because people like us who are rated underdogs who always believed in content it's time for us to stand and deliver and tell to the world that content is important the story is the real hero make story as a star and of course budget uh, is key you can't go and make 400 crore films uh, with 5000 screens in india 400 crore films on box office won't work uh, no matter what you do no. and and that's where we have to be reasonable in terms of budget uh, when it comes to number screens uh, like in china you have 80000 screens a 400 crore film uh, can work because you'll have a lot of audience to look for when 5000 screens for a retro film is a real loss to start with uh, and 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 of course coming back to ott it was also a mistake from ott for giving such huge um, commercial benefit to star studded films that resulted in their kitty also going off the way and which you can see the corrections happening now and and uh, that 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 lot of films i've heard in the industry are being unsold ott has rejected them or walked off and all those things so these are all affecting uh, everything it was a short term up cycle which which could have taken in a in a very positive way but people tried to exploit it much and we are now at the lowest trough and i think this all would would change and 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 be hopeful that it should change i think entitlement is a great word because i mean it's something that has been felt by many uh, including me uh over years i mean if not decades this this almost uh this sort of a lopsided uh, master slave relationship between indian stars established production houses and and the audiences and i think for the first time perhaps we are seeing a real concerted pushback mm-hmm. by the audiences themselves which, which i just think is is absolutely phenomenal and and is is required uh so my last question I'll, i'll i'll come to something related directly related to drishyam films itself uh so i mean uh two of its films one one adhar which uh, you uidi imposed 28 cuts on it uh, the other is ghat which also uh, has not been able to uh, find a release what's happening what's the current status of these two films will they get a release at some point in in near or at least in distant future actually uh, i wanted to talk a lot about these two films uh, they are personally my favorite because i loved the script i selected the script and i made the film my mistake was that uh, geo wanted us uh, to make films for them and i went there um, uh, thinking that we'll enhance the partnership and probably i was very i was very hopeful that with big studios like geo coming on board with with the films which are Are, are rich in content and small in budget will help to make the films big and that was my biggest mistake and the matter actually is is subjective so i can't really talk about fair it. enough but of course uh, if you ask me yes i failed with the whole idea of taking these small and beautiful films which were curated by me in terms of screenplay taking to bigger studios who came on board uh, with lot of rights in terms of agreement and then when they saw the film they felt that it doesn't uh, you know go well with the the objectives of corporate world and whatever uh, and uh, whatever the reason is and and then what affected was the film uh, actually and that is that is the biggest loss uh, but i am hopeful that we may sort out this problem and probably still bring those films out 
and that's why I don't want to speak much because then it will harm the film. But but yes, I I learned the lesson, and that's where we decided that it's better to be alone, do whatever you want to do, and, and to the skill where you can go for it. That's it. Thank you so much for your time, Manish. Thanks. Uh, to receive instant updates on all videos from The Wire, click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. Pay to support independent journalism. Click the link in the description and choose the amount you want to pay.